have just one second. Yes, Dr. Pat, we are live. All right. Jihan, thank you very much. And uh, welcome to our speaker series uh, class today, which we're also doing in conjunction with the speaker series of the M3 Center. Um, we've been doing this on a weekly basis, most weeks. And uh, our speaker today is Virginia Haley. And uh, I have to apologize to the class and to Virginia. You know, normally, Virginia, this is your third or fourth time with us, I think. And uh, normally, they have an assignment due on you ahead of time. But uh, I'm so excited after the board meeting last week that I forgot to put the assignment up. And of course, did anybody say to me, you know, Dr. Pat, you don't have the assignment up here. Well, why would they? I don't blame them. <laughs> and, uh, so I just sent them an email this morning telling them it's okay, telling them who you were. So I'm going to do just a little bit more of an introduction than what I would normally do. But students, still, you remember, you still have to do your summary of today, and you have to ask your questions of Virginia Hilly. You're going to enjoy what she has to say. Akilia, can you turn your microphone on, your uh, camera on? So Virginia is not talking to black boxes. That's good. Okay. All right. Well, this is Virginia Haley. Virginia is the um, CEO and president of the uh, of Visit Sarasota County. And if you recall, when Elliot Falcioni was in here a couple of weeks ago, and Elliot and, and Virginia really have, their purposes are similar in, in both counties, but they have two different types of organizations. And Elliot's is, is run by the county, basically. Uh, I guess the county and the city, I'm not sure, Virginia. I think it's the county. Just the county. The county. And Virginia's is, and I was on it until uh, last month, uh, my term was over, or term or terms, I forget. I think it was two I might have served on there, was over. And um, uh, so Virginia, she'll explain it more to you, but it's, it's really one that is a an organization that serves the county in many ways and, uh, and promotes the county. Uh, Virginia is uh, also has a very good background in politics and political science. And after you talk to her and hear her talk, uh, you'll know why she's so smooth and, uh, and really good. Virginia just also finished a very important thing. She was the head of uh, the elected person, head of Visit Florida which is a huge, so it is to Florida what Visit Sarasota is to Sarasota County. And poor Virginia had to do this through all this stuff we're going through and you did a, you really did a great job, Virginia. Well, In addition you. to being uh, somebody who can get things moving, Virginia is a constant, so she's a great leader, but she's also a terrific manager. Remember, we've talked about leadership and management. They're not the same thing. And Virginia does both very well. So she manages visit Sarasota so that it, it uh, stays financially viable and smooth and does what it's supposed to do, but she inspires people with her leadership. So with that said, Virginia, I'm going to turn this over to you. And then we, if you can leave, uh, I'll remind you at about at about 1.30 to, to leave time for Q&A. Excellent. All right. Let me... An audience out uh, in, uh, in M3 land, uh, YouTube land, we will give you, to, you, you can write your questions to Jihan. Uh, and he will uh, pass them on to us. All right, and hopefully you are seeing my screen. We are. Excellent, let's get this in a slideshow mode. Well, thank you for that compliment uh, and the lovely introduction, Dr. Pat. I, we're really gonna miss you from the Visit Sarasota board. Um, <laughs> students, you don't know how lucky you are with the background and the people that Dr. Pat's worked with, um, he brought a lot of that to our board and made us a much stronger, much stronger uh, organization. So I wanna talk about two things. Um, the first, and I think this is what was given to you is the title, um, not surprising who visits Sarasota County is and what our role has been in our community's uh, COVID-19 response. And then I wanna to talk to you about another role that destination marketing organizations play in their communities. Uh, and that's really not only just being marketing, but the importance of managing a destination. And the same holds true whether you're managing an attraction, uh, a hotel, a catering company, it isn't enough to just market it, but you need to make sure that your product stays relevant 
to your customers. So we'll first talk about who is uh, Visit Sarasota. And I think I just went back a slide. We are a nonprofit corporation uh, formed about 40 years ago uh, with, for the sole purpose of promoting tourism in Sarasota County. Um, so we're, diff di we're our model, which is a public private model. So it's a private entity, Visit Sarasota, and we contract with Sarasota County government to do the tourism promotion using money from what's called the bed tax, the tourist development tax. Let's keep rolling. We're uh, 13 people, 13 uh, folks on the staff. Uh, we've lost some uh, positions that we have to leave open and we had to do some layoffs back in March. Uh, and we have more than 40 volunteers who work with us. And I think one of the things that's very important about my organization is um, my employees, those 13 people work on more than 30 different civic organizations. So everything from um, the junior league to neighborhood associations, chambers of commerce, different arts groups. And that really helps us get to know the heart and soul of our community. And that's something you have to do if you're trying to promote it. Virginia, may I interrupt you for one minute sure. too. Uh, I just, uh, we want to give you a note that what we're seeing is the presenter's view. You, you might want to. Oh, oh, thank you. We don't want to ruin your show for you, Virginia. <laughs> so we can see the Stop next slide. Share and do the right one. Yes. Yeah. If you it have doesn't to matter that much, but you know. It's... Well, I, I hate for you to see my notes that says, make sure you say this and that about about Dr. Pat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I don't know why, let me, um... Virginia, like if you have two screens, just pick on the one that is big one. Yeah. That is or small I... PowerPoint. See, Virginia usually has her assistants to help her with this. Yes, exactly. There we go. Now- Does that look a little- Yeah, so do, you can do from current slide or whatever you want to do. It's no, doing it's, the same it's, thing again, isn't it? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. There's one thing you can do if you'd like, but. Well, would we'll you... have to just put up. What What would you suggest, Jihan? Just go back. I'll tell you just one thing. It's easy fix. If you go back to your PowerPoint, if you just like escape out of here. Uh-huh. And then I'll, I'll show you. No, please share your screen. I'll just show you there. Very quick fix just like you did before in your PowerPoint. Okay, well, let me call it up again, hold on. Du, 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 du. This will make for riveting entertainment. Well, it's good we have your music in the background, Virginia. <laughs> All right, we're gonna share that screen. Okay, if you just go to the slideshow, please. Yes. If you click there and set up slideshow, you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And then here, just uh, you see on the right uh, right bot bottom corner, slideshow monitor. It says automatic there. And there is use presenter view. You see use presenter view? No, no, no. You can just click that one. That doesn't matter. Use presenter view. Mm. No, underneath, uh, Virginia. Use. All the use way down. Yeah. Uncheck that, please and click OK, and now you can do it. We will see only one screen. Yep, sorry. You're the best. He is. You're <laughs> the best. All right, let's get back on track. And then res resume slideshow. You can see it there on the top. Yep, it shows there yeah. from the current slide or whatever. Uh, is it resuming now? or just click on uh, present from current slide on the right. Yeah, the one on the right, a little bit left. left. Got it. One over, one more there. <laughs> this is very Perfect. funny. All right. There you go. If you just click there. Jump right. Okay. Come on, resume. Yeah, the, the one uh, button on the bottom right corner of the screen, 
it looks like a little uh yeah left a little bit left 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 please a little bit yeah that one yes please try that one see if that will work well no don't worry about it virginia how about if we start from the beginning all right You know, can you go back to that slideshow setup? Oh, something happened here. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, I can at least, oh, here we go. I'm approving. Okay. Just give me one quick second here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what it is we do. So we touch visitors um, in a lot of different ways. We talk to them about coming to Sarasota on vacation. Um, we establish relationships with meeting planners um, so they can bring their meetings or conferences to Sarasota. We work with sports organizing committees and even Olympic level uh, sports organizations to bring large sporting events to town. So we really work on a spectrum of different uh, parts of the tourism industry. And we like to think of the travel journey as, as really a cycle, particularly in terms of leisure visits. You know, so you have that sitting back, dreaming, saying to yourself, oh boy, I need a vacation. Um, and then you start to, you know, you hear about someone who went somewhere you saw their pictures uh, on Instagram. Um, it could be a whole different variety of things, um, but then maybe you're getting closer to your decision. You're starting to actually look at places. You're looking at destinations. Um, then you're actually in the planning cycle. You've decided Sarasota is where you want to go. You're double checking to see what events are going on. What kind of hotels do they have? Uh, and then finally booking, taking your vacation, but really the work still continues. Once you get to a vacation destination, you have to have a great time. And of course, when it's over with, you're bragging with all your friends and family about a great time you have. So really our job is to be at every one of these points in the cycle with the appropriate message as to what part you're playing. And that's true if you're planning a vacation or if you're a meeting planner uh, who's perhaps looking uh, at where your next conference is going to be scheduled. So we have to be at every step of the way um, understanding what those decision points are. Um, we know that we have a very, uh, I'll say a little bit about me um, you heard the basics from Pat, but you know, with this job, I've had it for 20 years. I've literally gone around the world uh, with this position, um, helping to promote Sarasota at different events, um, representing us around the US, everything from Google headquarters, Facebook headquarters to, um, you haven't traveled until you have to take um, circus performers with you on the road uh, <laughs> to promote the Sarasota circus heritage we have. Um, and it looks like an awful lot of fun, but the reality is um, usually we're in these fabulous places and we get to see the inside of a four by six trade booth. So it's not quite as glamorous as it seems, but um, on the other hand, it does give you the chance to see, you know, at least a little bit of the world. Maybe we should just stop the screen share altogether. Why don't we do that? Um, what's the impact of this work on a community? Here in, in Sarasota County, we brought in an outside firm to look at um, whether our marketing is really bringing people to town or not. We know some people come to Sarasota because their friends and family are here. They're coming to visit them anyway. We know others come because they love Sarasota or Siesta or Longboat, and they're going to come back here year after year. They just love it. So really, are we driving visitation, new people, 
people who wouldn't be here but for the work we're doing? And the answer is yes. It's about one third of all visitors who come are in response to some kind of message we have out in the marketplace. And then for every dollar of this tourist tax that's invested in Sarasota, it brings Sarasota County back about $4, almost $5 uh, in tax cost that goes back into their tax coffers. Um, last, uh, in 2019, our um, total economic impact was about 3.1 billion. So this isn't play money, these are real dollars. It's very important to our economy. And our um, budget uh, that we have to do all that uh, for this year is $4.3 million. Now that's down by a third because of the uh, downturn in tourism due to, due to COVID and some other political reasons, which Pat knows all about. Oh, yes. Virginia, before you go on, you know what? It wasn't a distraction for you to, to share the slideshow the way you were. And that's fine. And then oh, OK, can you the, can see it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have the vision. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It looked yeah. like it was frozen. No. And then we'll have the I think you got to have to advance them manually. But that's that's okay. fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. That's good. So let's talk about COVID, even though I would rather not. <laughs> uh, but what is interesting, um, and I think really important for you to understand is even though we, you know, we had red tide, we have had hurricanes, we had the deep water uh, BP oil spill, um, we had the British tourists who were murdered. I mean, we have faced all kinds of crises, but uh, nothing uh, as dramatic as COVID. But you know, in the end, our response to COVID is the same as any kind of campaign. It's really no different than if we were planning our summer family beach uh, advertising campaign, because it starts with our customers. First and foremost, we really need to understand in this life-changing event what our customers are thinking. So we began a, a series, a wave of research that started in April uh, and this current one ended uh, in August. And we did it in cooperation with uh, Fort Myers Sanibel, normally big competitors of ours, but we share many characteristics here in Southwest Florida. And frankly, it helped to stretch our dollars. And so we were talking to consumers uh, to, to really understand where they were. And what we did with these waves was we watched how their attitudes gradually were changing week from week. So I'm going to share some of these slides from the last wave that we did. And we saw certain things. Now, some of these things are getting very political. But you have to say, you know, this is what our customers are telling us. Our customers are saying, despite everything, they still believe the CDC more than any other source or politician. Um, about half of them feel it's safe to travel. Those who do not feel it's safe really aren't going to be traveling until there's a solid vaccine that's been deployed throughout the population. And that they are really looking for uh, the destination, the hotel, the restaurant, to be upfront in showing their, um, not only that they're clean, but they're sanitizing. Let's look at the next. Um, we looked very much at their activities and the great thing for our area is that beaches are one of the places they felt most comfortable. Um, and so that was particularly good news for us. And we really saw it because once we did open back up for travel, particularly July, August, we were almost sold out uh, every weekend. Now then during the week, the business dropped off, but you saw that nice short-term uh, weekend beach business. And people are taking vacations. It's not surprising uh, that most of them want to drive, but I will say in our business, a drive destination is normally something about three to four hour drive from home. 
right now people are perfectly willing to drive 10, 11, 12 hours. So that helps us because we can reach into really all of Southeast US as a customer base. And that um, a lot of our travelers will definitely plan on vacations, even our nervous travelers, once they have the perception that COVID is over. And that's widely believed to be a well executed vaccine. We'll see if that happens. Um, some of the key takeaways is we still have a lot of interest in Southwest Florida. Uh, that interest has increased, um, but you, know, you still have to worry about the safety issues. Um, you're, you're seeing some customers having resistance to travel um, but most potential customers, even those who are nervous about travel, are starting to take a look at travel messages, travel articles, travel stories. Again, a very good sign for future travel. Um, two important things on this slide. The second bullet, um, there's a huge household financial impact. Even if everyone in the, in the home has kept their job, kept their salaries, chances are there's someone else in their family or within their close sphere who hasn't, who they might be helping out. So the, the financial impact, their stock portfolio um, could have a longer term impact on how many vacations people might take next year and the year after. And then a very tricky thing for Visit Sarasota to navigate is the last bullet seven out of 10 do not want visitors coming into their communities right now. They're afraid. They're afraid that these visitors are going to come, misbehave, uh, and bring more COVID to them. So we have to be very, very careful in the way we're bringing visitors into the community. So let's take a look at what we did. Um, first of all, we like to talk about the travel funnel. I would imagine, Dr. Pat, that your students have heard plenty about the, the funnel in their, different, in their different classes. And as I mentioned, we like to be present throughout the travel planning process. In this case, we're just focused on the lower end of the funnel right now. Um, if someone's not willing to travel, why spend our limited dollars trying to change their minds? We don't have enough money. No one really has enough money to change their mind. So we really look at those people who are obviously through their behavior, uh, their digital behavior, thinking about planning travel. Uh, and uh, you can see pretty soft messages here. It's not a hard sell. It's just making sure Sarasota is front and center. Uh, adjusting our tactics and our messages on SEM and really with all media, a little bit of a change in our targeting, much closer to home and younger than we normally would skew. On social media, again, the creative, you see that make the most of summer while socially distancing, kayak mangroves, play along 40 miles of sugary soft sand. So really playing up the outdoor opportunities uh, that are here and then incorporating both aspirational messaging and safety messaging. And you'll see, we kind of did a number of different um, channels and themes throughout the summer that we used, whether it was Siesta Key being named number one beach by TripAdvisor again, um, our restaurant week promotions, all of our different na nature promotions. A big part of it was both um, what we like to call raw photography, a lot of user generated content um, so that it's not always visit Sarasota's voice. Um, we're, we're using others within the community and a lot of um, outdoor nature photography uh, and really making sure that we had the visuals there for people to see. And the results are pretty high engagement levels uh, across all platforms that we were using. And I'll make a note, we, we really backed off on the Twitter posts, um, mainly because of the political lines going on Twitter 
um, we generally like to stay away from political conversations. It doesn't make good um, bedside fellows when you're thinking happy vacations, wonderful, and everybody over here all fighting each other. On the, web, on the website, um, you may have noticed on the research that destination websites have become more used than ever before uh, because people really wanna know the local situation on the ground. And we kept everything posted on that website throughout. So when there were travel restrictions, when the beaches were closed, we made sure that information was on the website and that visitors knew we weren't trying to hide anything from them because doing so would do lasting damage with the relationship with our visitors. Uh, so you get an idea of the web. Um, we showed safety. We did a lot of, uh, a lot of different videos. This was one of our restaurant owners. We really used CrowdRiff to help us um, assemble a lot of other voices that were uh, tweeting or Instagrams about Sarasota as an easy way to get permission to use their content, use their videography, and then help boost their, their posts, but really helped us with current and fresh content throughout all of this. Um, and with that, I'll say that uh, last week, uh, the start, the Smith Travel released their top 10, not as bad destinations or, or not so bad list. And then the top 10 of the destinations really, really doing badly. And Sarasota, actually it's Sarasota Manatee because they counted us both together, were in the top 10 categories for how we're weathering the storm in almost every category, be it average daily rate, hotel occupancy, demand. So we're, we're very lucky. But when you see Orlando, Miami in the top worst performing, it's concerning because we are in the same state and we can't have our tourism leaders uh, doing that badly. So, so we need um, some of the tourism core to come back if we're all going to come back uh, holistically. So that's all I have to say with COVID before I move to this next section. Dr. Pat, should I stop? Yeah, let's see if they have any questions. questions on that. Yeah, let's see if any, any of the students have any questions for you. Anybody? Well, Sid, you look like you're gonna say something. Are you? No? No, okay. Not sure what to ask right now. Okay, that's fine. Seems that's pretty clear and similar to some of the yeah. things the last speakers have said. Virginia, if you could just clear up two things. You had a slide earlier on with SEM. Maybe you want to tell them what SEM is. Oh, so we have, let me get some, where is it? So we have, um, you know, I have to think about what it stands for. Search engine um, marketing. Okay. So this is when we're, um, you, so, and we have both paid and we do our S, SEM and we also do search engine optimization. So some of it is paid, some of it is not, uh, but with the paid in using largely Google as our platform, that's where we were adjusting our messaging. Oh, okay. And uh, um, Virginia, the other one that I hadn't, heard of them, the students probably know about it, but the crowd riff, what, what is crowd riff? It's a really handy tool. Um, crowd riff aggregate, you basically go into crowd riff and say, here are, um, here are some things that I want to trend. So I want to trend say, um, hash, just different hashtags. And believe me, it's, it's a process because you, you refine those hashtags all the time. But if it's, you know, hashtag Sarasota vacation, um, hashtag Siesta Beach, it aggregates any content using those hashtags. So in the morning, we can open up CrowdRef, you see everything that's been posted with those various hashtags. And it has a really easy way to go back to whoever posted and ask permission to use their content. 
And then we're able to use their um, content, videos, photography, and pull it all into our channels or onto our website. Um, and then it also helps them because now they have the benefit of traffic that's coming through us. So it's very, you know, in the, in the olden days, five years ago, you know, people would be very protective of their content. And I, I remember being very upset because there was a, a local guy here in Sarasota creating websites that almost looked like a tourism website. And we were very upset and steaming about it. Well, now you basically um, create benefits for each other. Yeah. Uh, and it gives voices. You know, as I mentioned, we have 13 people. I have only one person on my staff who does content. Um, and so you can't cover a wide uh, community and you want different voices on there and different perspectives. And you want your customers to feel that it's a legitimate voice. You don't want them to think it's some hired hand from an advertising agency. People can really sniff right through that. And you've got to have people out there who can react to things if there's a sudden change uh, in, in the world out there. Thank you, Virginia. That was helpful. Um, I now, have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Devin has a question. Um, do you guys, does like Visit Sarasota, either on the website, um, do any actual like planning trips for people? Like, do you ever work like a travel agent or is it just promotion? It's pretty much just promotion. We do have um, a lot of visitor services. So we have, we answer a lot of email, especially emails. Uh, and even telephone calls from visitors with very specific questions. And then we have visitors who may want to know, I want to go on Siesta Key. I want to rent a villa for a month. Um, can you tell me who has places to rent? So we have a system where it goes out to those businesses and they can let the customer know, yes, I still have a place left. But we don't do actual travel bookings. We experimented with that in the past. We had a booking engine on our site and we've just found consumers look at us as more of a neutral role um, to just present the information and then they go to their favorite booking engine or their hotel loyalty and, and they like to book it that way. Very good question. So let's okay. talk about the other part of this, and that is um, our role in the management side. So, you know, for a long time, um, de destination organizations felt that, you know, if the big thing in my town was a covered bridge, then by gosh, I'm promoting the daylights out of that covered bridge. Uh, and then, you know, someone finally figured out, well, you know, there's 50 covered bridges in the United States. Um, it's hard to hang your hat on that. Maybe we need something more than the one covered bridge. And so the destination marketing organization starts to work with the community and lo and behold, they may now have the world's largest peanut for you to enjoy. But that's the very simplistic view. What we did here in Sarasota was looked at Sarasota's Bayfront around the purple Van Wezel Performing Arts Hall. And if you look at all the acreage, and it's funny how outdated this photo is now, um, particularly the core 42 acres city owned property on the Bayfront. And who has the best view of the Bay? It's your car in the parking lot. Or maybe if you're lucky, the crew that's loading the show in on the loading dock of Van Wezel. So you've got this gorgeous area on the bay that's all paved over. Uh, and other than going to a performance, there's not really much of a reason to be there. And so seven years ago, next week, uh, the Visit Sarasota Board of Directors said there has to be a better vision for this. There has to be an opportunity to make a destination public space for visitors, but just as important for those of us who live here. And so we started on a journey 
looking at all the different attempts to do something about this property that had happened over the years and kind of looked at, well, why didn't, why didn't any of them ever seem to work? And started having conversations in the community in the first two years of this project, my board chair and I held 300 meetings, uh, one-on-one meetings, uh, meetings with community groups, neighborhood groups, cultural organizations, civic groups. And in the end, I think wound up with an army of 65 different organizations joining us and saying to our elected leaders, we think that there's a better vision for what this Bayfront could be. And we did a lot of learning along the way. This is the, the vision for the Brooklyn Bridge Park, which was uh, an industrial site uh, facing the most gorgeous view of lower Manhattan you've ever seen. Uh, and they use these principles of community building and really laying out what the park, what the public park space should be and then sticking by those very important principles. So we spent another two years reaching out to the community and really understanding what did people want? And they were suspicious. Why is the tourism organization running this? Why is it the government running it? What are you really up to? So a lot of it was building trust with people in Sarasota who different groups who over the years have fought with each other and they had to really learn how to work together. And then we tried different ways to reach out to the community. My favorite, you see this uh, picture up above. We uh, did a listening planning session uh, at J-Dubs, the brewery in their outdoor garden and everyone got free beer. So you can imagine we got a pretty good turnout. <laughs> uh, we did a, a new town after church Sunday supper uh, it's, so we got different voices involved with the whole planning process and identified, and there's a lot of detail behind it, six things that were really important for the community. And this is our rock. Uh, this is what really will guide the whole process of the park. So after these three years of planning and bringing the community together, we knew at that point Visit, Visit Sarasota was kind of at the edge of its knowledge level, if you will, and we needed to bring in professionals. So our board chair at the time went out to the community, raised $2 million, and we'd already raised almost uh, half a million up to this point, created a new organization to um, actually begin a master planning process. And we were so lucky that the former uh, CEO of this little company called Procter & Gamble happened to retire here in Sarasota and he's become our chair. And we retained a, a nationally prominent firm, Sasaki, to help do a whole nother round of community uh, building process. And from that came up with a master plan for the site. And remember, this is a master plan that will probably take at least 10 years, if not more, to build out. So we're really thinking about your generation and the generation after it will see the benefits. Um, and you'll see that you see the current Van Wezel. This is a future performing arts. This opens up the current boat basin to more pedestrian enjoyment and then moves the boat basin a little bit farther to the north. Um, and even since the development of this master plan, there have been some changes. Let me go back to this so you can see. Whoops. If you look to the top, you'll see there's a straight pier going out. And one of the things we knew we couldn't build it all the one all at once. So the area along Boulevard of the Arts is really the very first phase. And what's good about this is it's the part of the land that has the most nature on it to begin with. So we had some really good features uh, to begin with. And one of the things we decided in designing it, I say we like I designed it, but instead of a straight pier, the new design is this curved sunset walkway. Why? 
because we actually found living, thriving corals in that part of Sarasota Bay and seagrass. So we, first of all, did not want to do anything to disrupt those corals. But secondly, it becomes a fantastic teaching opportunity. The other thing we're doing is right now, all the water from that part of Sarasota flows through this parking lot and dumps right into the bay, totally untreated. It comes off 41, all the oil, the dirt, the grease. Well, now that's all being captured here. Why? Because preservation of the bay was something we heard over and over again in our meetings. Show you one other shot. And you can see now um, that part of these walkways uh, have already uh, been constructed um, and have reopened to the public with the idea that the rest of this will be finished hopefully by the end of next year. And then the other thing in this final picture, you see that view from the walkway. And one of the things we did very intentionally that was quite important to us is you'll see we have a lot of diversity even in just these renderings because we want to send this message that yes, this is a great place for visitors to come, but we do have diversity in this community and we wanna make sure it's going to be open for all. So that kind of shows you the power of a destination marketing organization because we are so ingrained in the community we can help bring these projects about that not only help our industry, but make Sarasota a, a stronger place to live. So with that, Dr. Pat, I will be quiet. I'll leave this slide on our accreditation, just as you were recently accredited. Um, we have our accreditation from our international body and I'm really excited to say we are accredited with distinction um, because when you're using public dollars or you're in the public, you really always have to show that you're open, you're transparent, and that um, you're very, very respectful of the tax dollars. So well, what is, other when, when did you finish the accreditation, Virginia? Um, we got our first accreditation 12 years ago. Uh, and then just went through the whole reaccreditation with distinction a year and a half ago. Yeah, right. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's open it to the students first who are in the class, and then we'll open it to the audience at large. So uh, students, anybody have any anything you want Virginia to expand on or you want to dig uh, deeper into or go ahead, Bob. I have a question. Um, how, how long do you think this project will take? And honestly, so what are you, how are you guys going to clean up the water in the bay? I know you said that's important because I, I just launched a boat at the 10th street ramp the other day and that area specifically, it's just brown mud. The, the water is very dirty. So I, I mean, I love the idea. I love the look of everything, but it, it would just have, we'd have to do something to clean it. So in this first phase on the Southern end by the Hyatt, and there's a little, I think you see the picture of it. Hold on. Let's see. No. Yeah. There's a, there's this waterway and it was completely, there's the little, um, bridge that goes from where she was used to be over to the pedestrian bridge over to Van Wazel. This is all completely silted in like that whole shoreline. Yeah. So um, the, the, um, the engineering company working on this um, did a very careful dredging to remove the silt and just the amount of junk that's in there and caught up in the mangroves. There are a lot of Brazilian peppers and exotic plants intertwined with the mangroves. So getting those all out of there and then building swales throughout that whole project. So the water's retained and filtered on site before it moves out to the bay. 
So then each section over the years will then get their cleanup and treatment. But it, as I said, it is, it's at least 10 years. Um, Chicago, their wonderful lakefront, uh, where the famous bean statue is, um, they're in year 100 of their project. Now it's a little bit bigger than ours is, <laughs> but these are long-term, the, Bri the Brooklyn uh, Bridge Park, uh, which I mentioned, which any of you in New York City, it is definitely worth seeing that public space. Um, they are now, they're now working on their next to the last stage and they've been at it for 20 years. So you, you do have to, um, there's a gentleman who was head of the uh, Vancouver uh, destination marketing visit Vancouver. And he used to say, we need cathedral thinking. We need people who understood that if you were the stonemason who started to build one of those beautiful cathedrals in Italy, you will not see it finished in your lifetime, but your grandchildren will. Uh, and, and we just think in community building, there are some things you can do for the right here and now. Um, our work on the civil rights trail is an example of that, not a big heavy lift and we got it done in two years. But something like this, you're thinking 10, 15 years. Um, and it's a lot of money. Um, you know, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars, especially the, um, the new performing arts facility. Yeah, I, I really like the circular sunset pier too, being right there, because it, it makes a lot more sense than a straight pier for fishing or whatever, because first, there's not many, it's not really that good of fishing right there. Right. And and then people don't have to fight over a spot to watch the sunset. You've got a, a broad, a long stretch of area where people can sit out there and relax and enjoy the sunset. I like, I think it's a pretty cool concept overall. Yeah, we're, we're really happy with it. And one of the important principles of this park is whatever activity is happening, um, be it, you know, a yoga class or what, what salsa lessons, um, that they must be free for the public. Now, obviously the performing arts hall won't be, but, but that there are other great parks. Um, there's one example in Cincinnati that all the programming is always free. They find sponsors for it. And again, it opens things up so you don't have this feeling that the waterfront in Sarasota is only for the rich. Other questions? I have a question. Matt, or marketing? Yeah, somebody's got a question. Who was it? I do, Casey. Casey. Okay, go ahead, Casey. Yeah, okay. I see the yellow box around your name now. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know that Mount Marine is doing um, something. I know they're like building a new facility. Is that like in concurrence with this or is that something different? Um, that is uh, different. Uh, now, Moat is playing a role with this project, actually, in this waterway, um, and it, it really goes, Bo, to your point, and I forgot to mention it. If you go out there uh, and look from this bridge towards the bay, you'll see these funny little markers, mm -hmm. and those were actually installed by Moat, so we will have a measurement over time to hopefully document the improved water quality. Uh, so, so the Bay is working with Moat on that project. Now, early on, um, Moat had plans and had gone to the city with a plan to build a convention center, a hotel, and an aquarium on this site. And um, it, was, it was very early on in the planning stages. And, and we kind of said to them, that's one idea, um, but we hate to commit to that because it would basically tie up the whole park when people haven't even had a chance to talk about what they want. Moat chose to move forward. Uh, and in the end, the city said, no, we want this Bayfront planning to continue. So that's the point a couple of years later that Moat announced they're moving out to the UTC mall. Uh, and they're taking some of the public park land 
that's near the rowing facility for their new aquarium. Oh, okay. I didn't know that's where it was. I just had seen that uh, they were doing something. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you. Other questions? Virginia, let me just uh, uh, ask one. And, um, you know, I have to say, I mean, I've, I've been here almost five years now, and I, I don't know that I still completely comprehensively understand uh, what the feel of, of this Bayfront Park is supposed to be. So is it, maybe feel is the wrong word, some of the objectives. I mean, it's so, you mentioned for locals certainly to enjoy it, um, but what are, what are some of the other things you envision happening in there, Virginia? Well, first of all, as you could see, there's, you've got a lot of public green space, so you can do different activities and events which right now we're really constrained uh, near the downtown core for our outdoor events anymore. As you know, more and more of what used to be vacant lots now um, have buildings on them. So you see everything from, you know, outdoor amphitheater, walkways. This is envisioned as a heavier activity area along the water with restaurants and light retail. Okay. Um, yeah, so the traditional uses along here would stay. And then the idea is this, which abuts residential condo, is more of the passive nature end. Okay. But even with that passive nature, the idea is that you've got this lawn area, a place where people could gather, you know, maybe you have, you know, food truck Wednesdays. So there'll be a whole team whose job it is to program activities in the park and okay. find the sponsors to underwrite it. So I'm looking at this, you know, that it's the kind of place that just as when you're in Chicago, you, you go to Grant Park, you go to see the bean, you know, you, it's something every visitor does, you know, they, they may go to the Sears tower, but, that's what we envision for this, that it is the place that you go. Something's always happening. You've got the gorgeous view um, and, and you get to really experience Florida. Virginia, are special. there uh, boats uh, that, uh, is there, is there going to be some kind of a pier for, for boats? To, yes. Uh, the, the thought it, this end again, under construction now would be non-motorized, you know, canoe, kayak, yeah. hopefully, you know, some kind of rental operation. So this would be the more passive. And then this is where you'd have the more active. Um, and this is the redone boat ramp. Okay. You know, one of the things, a lot of these plans that were done in the past 50 years got rid of the boat ramps. And one of the things, and this is why you talk and learn and get referred to new people. You know, we have a very large marine industry in this area, a lot of boat building companies. And this is what they use day in, day out. They're there Monday through Thursday before all the recreational boaters take it over. But they're in there every day of the week testing their new models. Uh, taking dealerships out to see their new to see their new boats. So if you were to shut down this boat access, you'd be killing thousands of high paying jobs in Sarasota County and Manatee. So you don't really think, you know, you don't really think about that. But we met with all of the boat builders and really came to realize how we, we could keep the boat ramp but make it even more viable for them. And that one of the ways you see it is this one's protected. And um, I don't know about you, Bo, but that 10th Street ramp, the wind tends to sweep across the bay and, and boy, late afternoon with a good chop and you see a husband and a wife that have been out on that boat on that bay and had a couple beers and trying to get that thing back up onto their <laughs> truck. It's not a pretty sight. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> not as they, bad as the guy Marina Jacks this weekend. No, there's um, my dad's always told me stories about how on the 4th of July or Memorial Day, 
It was like a, an actual tradition where people would take their lawn chairs and grab a 12 pack and go out there and watch the fights at the boat ramp. Guilty. And, and I always wanted to do it. And That's but a the, lot of fun. It, the, it, it's the truth though, because the 10th street ramp, if you were to get rid of that, that's the biggest ramp that we've got in Sarasota. And it's the longest ramp. That's where people put their really large center console boats in. You can't, you can't launch them at half the other ramps around here. It goes out into the water. The ramp itself goes out into the water like 20 or 30 feet, which is longer than most ramps. So, yeah, keeping yeah. that ramp with all the marine builders in Sarasota and marine mechanics that use it every day to make sure the boats are running right, you, you would be killing a big industry. Yeah. I like well, that. and the idea, even if you could launch a large boat from Ken Thompson, the idea of having to um, trailer your boat through St. Armand's Circle is just, a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia, could you, before we move on from this topic, um, would you use your arrow? So I see uh, the uh, Van Weitzel is the purple building there, right? Right. Yeah. Now, is... And then the, the the structure that is there, right? So is that the new Van Weitzel then? That's the new performing arts venue. Okay. And, and what they, are, they are kind of just starting. Um, actually, there's a big community survey out right now with starting to think about the programming, you know, what the building should look like. Should it be one theater and a black box? It, it, all that kind of thing's right. going on right now. And what would happen to the old, the old purple Van Weissel Theater? Um, so far, it has been uh, an incredibly strong voice from the community not to tear it down. Um, what it would be used for is going to be a very interesting conversation. You know, one of the first ideas was, do you get rid of the... Um, the tower and the, you know, the backstage area, the offices and open up the shell part to maybe open air performance space. Uh, and they took a really good look at it. Well, because the shell faces the water uh, and remember it was built in the mid sixties. Um, the concern is that even in a tropical storm it would flip that thing right over. Mm and you'd have concrete blowing all over the, the bay front. So, so you would wind up having to rebuild it in order to make it strong. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's an asset that sits a mere 20 feet from the water uh, at a time that you have to worry about sea water, sea level rise. Right. So I think that's, so for right now it's there. Um, in what way it will be repurposed who will take on the job of repurposing? Um, we're just going to have to see. Well, and you know, is. that's true. Some of these projects, Brooklyn Bridge, um, they had plans for pretty much most of the park, but at the end of the park is this massive building, huge building that was where the, um, I think it was Jehovah's Witness always published a weekly um, bulletin that was very popular and they produced millions and millions of them every week, 18 wheel trucks would drive into this building. That's how massive it was. So it was a printing plant. Um, so it's now just being renovated. Okay. And, and of course I think it will be condos or something. So some yeah. of these things, it just takes a long time for people to figure out, okay, what is it we're gonna do with this? And I would like to point out to, to the students and anybody else who's listening, um, the uh, sensitivity, the balance, and the alacrity with which Virginia answered those questions, you see. So, so you, can, <laughs> you can read into the answers, but on the other hand, she leaves things open, and that's a very political, sensitive thing. I like that, Virginia. It's, it's good. We all can learn. Uh, yeah. Virginia, before we, we open it, for, we get off the topic of this, uh, this is a little bit related to it, and having spent now the last four years with me on your board. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, but you know what is near and dear to my heart when we talk about the major demand generators for, for room nights in Sarasota and certainly tourists 
certainly whatever commercial activity we have. But you know, that third one for me is groups and uh, groups. conferences and whatever. And I know at one time we talked about um, why that didn't happen any place near any of these sites. And, and, and I, you just explained those reasons. What is your thought, Virginia? And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what is your thought? Do, do you think that we're going to fulfill group needs, group meeting space needs, solely with building in the hotels? Or are we going to eventually have to figure out some kind of a common uh, spot? And students, what we're talking about is the hotels, Any most hotels are always going to have meeting spaces and, and conference rooms. But if you want to get larger groups in, you need a place where they can they can meet together for plenary sessions and, and have exhibit halls and that kind of thing. Uh, I never pinned you down in our meetings, Virginia, but I'll, I'll ask for your opinion now. Well, I, I think we can certainly show the business prior to COVID um, that we can't even go after because we don't have enough meeting space. Um, and I start to talk to meeting planners and say, well, listen, we could fit your meeting in. Part of it will be in the West End part of it will be at the Hyatt, part of it will be at the Ritz. And they say, no, I, I could be at the Dolphin at Disney and have it all in that one hotel, Never mind three hotels. So, so you have the competition against hotels themselves with really large meeting space. And then those uh, communities such as Tampa that have convention centers. Um, you, in order to have a successful convention center, um, it needs to be within walking distance of your key amenities and have enough immediate hotels around it to, um, for the people attending the convention. That pretty much puts it in downtown Sarasota. And the challenge for us right now is there's, there's not a lot of vacant land left. Yeah. I mean, really, you know, you've got um, the counties thinking about selling the building on Ringling Boulevard uh, and moving their operations out east. So that's some land. But they understand that, you know, they'll get the most money by selling it to a developer who will do condos. It's right. just simple math. Another great piece of land would be where the downtown post office is. That's a huge piece of land. Oh, yeah. Where there's enough for a small convention center and a hotel. What we face are two problems. Private developers, all those hotels that have opened in the last couple of years, all of them walked away from having significant meeting space. Yes, they have meeting space, but it's pretty small. Why? the numbers don't work for them. Mm -hmm. The numbers just don't work to have to bear the cost of that meeting space. And then on the public side, with public funding, which is usually from the tourist tax, there's just no more tourist tax in Sarasota available uh, because they've used it on all these other amenities like the spring training stadium for the Braves, the one for the O's, um, the rowing facility. So, so it's a combination of what is left that's a good location combined with how would we fund it. Yeah. So we continue to keep our ears open right now. The cities that depend on the group business are the ones who have been hit hardest. Um, because And it's really, it, you know, th those are the cities that, you know, my colleagues had to lay off 90% right. of their staff. Right. Um, but you can't make plans on what's happening right now, but that is the reality that it's believed for the next couple of years, it's gonna take a while to get, we'll, we'll, we're already getting small group business and sports, but it will take a little bit for the big conventions to come back. And, and you bring up a great point, Virginia. I mean, uh, diversity in in servicing our three four major sources of demand is really crucial because as we've seen around here if something happens and it, it will happen uh, to impact uh, our demand growth or sustaining demand current demand 
uh, then we really get hurt if we have everything in one pot. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and you look at places like San Francisco and Chicago, and New York, I suppose Atlanta too, you know. Uh, oh, Atlanta really, well, Atlanta had the double whammy of the busiest airport all of a sudden ha to have to shut down three of the terminals. Yeah, did they really? Okay. Oh yeah, they went dark. It's so, hard, to, hard to imagine. So conventions, uh, students, you know, and, and you know, there are just to refresh your memories, I think most of you have had the marketing class already uh, and the lodging classes, but you know, really we're talking about uh, local, of course, we're talking about regional uh, we're talking about state and regional and then, but the big ones are the, the big national conventions. And uh, so I think a place like Sarasota has gotten pretty good at trying to carve out little niches that they can do for conventions, you know, small professional groups, uh, regional state, that kind of thing. Uh, so thank you, Virginia, for responding to that. No uh, more questions from the students. And if not, Jihan, do we have any coming from the audience at large? Yes, Dr. Pat, we have two questions uh, for Virginia. I'm going to read them uh, to her, the first one. Um, Bradenton and Sarasota areas are very close to each other. Did each counties ever consider joining forces when they market tourism for both counties? How could this benefit or not? Um, we we do market jointly at times and at other times we kind of go our separate ways because even though we're close to each other in our core essence our brands are a little are a little bit different um but we do do a lot of joint marketing in fact we do it with our colleagues along all of southwest florida so there are times that um, we've done some really successful campaigns with sarasota manatee um, with airlines um, such as Allegiant, all these new flights that are in uh, our airport over the last couple of years are there in part because Sarasota and Bradenton and Manatee County are equal partners in marketing campaigns with those airlines. We do a lot together internationally. In fact, we share the, um, although we have to let them go, the same PR and rep firm in the UK. Uh, because again, it makes sense to market us as a region. We go after a lot of large sporting groups together. But remember, we also do a lot with Charlotte County to our south. Um, so Sarasota goes all the way down to Englewood, um, Northport. Northport is the largest city in Sarasota. Which really? I bet used to, yes. Northport is the largest city in Sarasota County. Many people think it's Sarasota. No, it's Northport. Now they generate less than 1% of the tourist tax, but that's just for now. We have a hotel finally opening there. Um, so Shihan, it, it really, it depends on what the project is, but we do an awful lot together. Um, and for that reason, because it makes a lot of sense. And we do a lot with our partners to the South. Great. And there's one more question. Can I ask you quickly? There is a comment. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can yes. hear you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation, Ms. Virginia Haley. I'm from Turkey and in Turkey, people always find DMOs and their projects not very useful in the beginning. And then she asked her question. You mentioned in your presentation that you had a lot of meetings with people for about three years. Did they change their minds after these meetings? Do they believe in your project now? Um, I think the answer is yes. And there will always be opponents to any project. Um, but the reason for having those meetings early is every time we had one of those meetings and we heard ideas, they got wrapped into uh, the guiding principles for this project. And while, while some of the groups maybe didn't see their exact words, they were able to go through these principles and say, oh yeah, that's the one we talked about. This is the one that means a lot to us. So in the past, what would happen is 
you'd have these design firms and consultants come in and come up with the design and the ideas. And they were often very cool. Uh, and then try to go convince the community. We went the other way around and said, what would, you, we made them the consultants. What, what do you want in this park? And then we kept going back to them each step of the way. Uh, so they felt that they were, I mean, there was a lot of pride in this, uh, that people felt like uh, people always come up and say, hey, I remember I was in one of those very first meetings. Um, so by going to the community first with a clean slate, I think is the key to our success. And you know what, Virginia, the other thing I noticed too, and, and uh, DMOs, by the way, Destination Management Organization for people who doesn't don't know what that means. But the other thing that um, that I noticed, you know, from my time with you is that you had champions from the industry. I'm thinking of Michael Clauber, for example, as one example, uh, Saunders, all these people who, who were very, you know, powerful locally, but who really did a good job in, in gathering people to come and discuss this and, and eventually come up with a plan. I think that was important. So, so really, I mean, it wound up being um, almost what I would call classic community organizing. But yeah. yes, you had some early believers who were, you know, very, very passionate. And, and we were lucky. Yes, people like Michael Clobber, you know, one of the best known business people in our community, but also the woman who at the time headed the coalition of all the neighborhoods. Uh, which generally is viewed as an anti-everything, <laughs> which is an unfair description, just as developers are unfairly lumped into one group. Right. Um, she was an early believer and an early champion, and, and we were very lucky in that way. Well, that's great. That was a really good question, Jihan. Well, yeah. I want to thank our audience at large, and I want to thank you students again today. I have to tell you, Virginia, my takeaway for the day Cathedral thinking. I had never heard that before. I like it. And you know, when I travel around Italy, I think about that. And, and they'll, people will tell you, oh, this took three, four generations to, to build. And so, uh, uh, but people did it with care. So that's, that's really cool. Thank you. I like that term, cathedral thinking. Thank Virginia, you. I really appreciate that. I, I wish we had more time. I'd like to talk more about Snowbirds returning. Uh, I had a phone call last night from our across the street neighbor who are snowbirds. Well, they're afraid if they go back up to Syracuse uh, after having visited here, they'll put in quarantine. So I, I told them my view on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it, it's wonderful, Virginia. I can't thank you enough, Virginia. And you know what? I Students, uh, look at what Elliot, last week, two of our really complimentary speakers on our board panel were Elliot and Virginia, two different kinds of organizations, but both, both with common purposes to them. So, uh, and he, he let out with you as the first person he, he questioned Virginia, which I- Oh, okay, okay. Kind of, kind of cool, you know? So Virginia, thank you. Everybody uh, open your microphones for a second. All right, everybody open your microphones. Let's give Virginia a big hand. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. And then uh, Virginia, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to this again uh, next fall, uh, next spring, I mean, I hope. I can talk into it. Of course, and Dr. Pat, in the meantime, if your students ever need something from us or have questions, you know to send them our way. We love to help. We always loved having interns, which hopefully will get everybody yeah. back once we reopen the office. But. If, if you guys ever have questions, you let us know, we'll be happy to help. And that often happens, Virginia. I get all the time I get requests for the email.